Hey, good morning, guys. So today, depending on what I have you, uh, we're going to be doing the Flame Lab. And I wanted to have uh, this put together for you uh, so that you guys can kind of get the experience of what the Flame Lab looks like, even though you're not here. All right, so a little background on what we've been talking about. So the theme of this chapter is we are trying to pinpoint what is happening with electrons out here in the electron cloud, where they are and what they're doing. One of the ideas behind what happened with electrons was proposed by a scientist named Niels Bohr. He came up with something called the Bohr model of the atom. And fundamentally, it puts the nucleus in the middle, just like it should with the Rutherford model. And he said that the electrons were contained on these rings orbiting the nucleus, right? kind of like planets around the sun, which is sometimes uh, why the Bohr models refer to as the solar system model. So he said, I've got electrons living in these energy levels, all right? And they abbreviate that with N, right? But it just means there's various levels, all right? And there's more than these, but this will highlight what we're talking about. Right? What he said was, like, we can get electrons to jump up levels and they can fall down from levels. So if I want an electron to jump up from the first level to the second, it needs more energy because each level further from the nucleus is more energetic than the last. So the idea was if an electron wants to jump up, it has to absorb energy. It would take in a form of energy like light or sound or something like that. On the other end, they thought that electrons could fall down. So that electron there made a transition from the third level to the second level. The third level has more energy than the second. So that energy has to go somewhere, right? And the idea is that energy gets released because it must be conserved in a package called a photon. Right? And a photon is simply a package of energy that gets released. Well, depending on how far apart these levels are, Right? That energy package right, is going to be a wave. And we know from earlier on that different waves possess different energy, like an X-ray is a high energy wave. It's scary, right? It can hurt us. But there's radio waves that are longer and not as energetic that we don't worry about. Right? So the idea here is, is when an electron falls from a higher level to a lower level, it releases a package of energy depending on how far the drop is. It manipulates what the wave looks like. And one of the cooler things that we can do is the waves very often will correspond with frequency and wavelength that uh, is detectable by our eye in the visible light. So when I go from, say, maybe the third energy level to the second, when I release that package of energy, I may see that as the color red. Like if we do a further drop, say I was way out here and say like n equals six and we're going to fall to like n equals two, doesn't have to fall all the way to the first level. That's a bigger energy drop. Energy gets released. We might get a higher energy color like purple. Like if the drop gets too big, we'll push out a visible light altogether. You won't even see a color. You will slide up past violet into ultraviolet maybe. And if it's a really close drop, like six to maybe five, there might not be enough energy released for us to detect it with our eye. We might be below visible red. It might be infrared or a microwave, something that we can't detect with our eye. So what we're gonna do in this lab, which is the flame lab, is we are going to go and test a series of metal nitrates, all right? Barium, calcium, cobalt, copper, 
lithium, lead, magnesium, nickel, potassium, strontium. And what we're going to do is we're going to excite their electrons up to a higher level. And we're going to do that by heating them. We're going to put them into a flame. Once the electrons are up there, they aren't stable enough to stay there. So they are going to return back down to their lowest energy state. And they give those names. The higher energy state is called the excited state. And the lower energy state is called the ground state. Right. So when you fall from the excited state to the ground state, there's going to be a release of energy in the form of uh, a package of energy called a photon. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to observe what that looks like right, and see if we can use it to identify unknowns, see if we can create a so-called signature for each of those elements. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the back. All right, now, what I'm showing you here, all right, I have got a piece of wire, all right, this is called nichrome wire. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to wet it, and I'm going to dip it into each of our samples. All right, when I do that, I'm going to then take it and hold it over our Bunsen burner, okay, and we're going to watch to see what color comes out of that. So I'm going to have to make it really dark. You're probably not going to see me. You'll have to just listen for the uh, sample that I'm testing so that you can get a good look at the color. All right. And I will burn it three, four, five times. All right. So that you can see each one and get a descriptor. What you want to do is fill in your data table in that observation section and get the description of the flame. All right. Now, when you do this, be as specific as possible. Use all the colors in your Crayola box, right? It's not just orange, it's orangish red. It's not, you know, violet. It might be, oh, it's purplish blue. So be specific because when you see the unknowns later, you need to be able to match up your terminology with your terminology. If you call my shirt just blue, then you would have to see this color and say blue. But if you saw like Carolina blue, you can't call that blue as well because those are like powder blue versus this, right? So you might want to say, hey, my shirt is navy blue. All right. So keep that in mind as you go through. All right, so I'm going to get our burner going just so you can see what's going on here. There's the burner. All right, now I'll bring the samples over All right, one by one, but I'm going to go turn the lights out All right, so we can see. All right, mostly can see my shadow now. Uh, we've got our burner flame going. As you can see, the burner all by itself is kind of a pale blue color. That's what methane burns. All right, so if I put the substance into the burner and you see no color change, all right, that means that it's emitting a pale blue color. Otherwise, we would see it change. All right, other ones all right, will make it look distinctly different than it was. All right, so if we're going to do this. I'm going to turn a little bit of water on for myself. I'm going to take my wire, wet it in the water. I'm bringing a sample over. This is the first one in your table. I am testing a sample that is barium. I'll test this one a couple times. And you want to look right at the top of that flame to see the color change there. So you're seeing, hopefully, a light yellow, maybe pale green-ish substance. All right, so our barium is going to be light yellow, 
to pale green. All right, now in between, I have to clean my wire right, to make sure there's nothing residual from the last sample. Because if I do that, and there's a little bit of a substance left, right, it's going to manipulate the next ones. And the key to us is we have got to see the different colors because that's how we know what the element is. So our barium, I'm thinking, is a, a pale yellow slash green substance. All right, moving on to our next one. We'll bring over right, a sample of calcium. So here's what our calcium looks like. And the calcium is burning in very, very distinctive orange color. So our calcium, all right, was orange and pretty true orange, not really much else in it. I will say all right, your calcium is pretty much right, an orange. All right, the third one right, is cobalt. I got some cobalt on my sample wire. That in there. All right, so it's orange as well, but it's got some sparks in it. So it's got some orange with some sparks inside of it. So you would want to say that this guy is orange with sparks. All right, so your cobalt is orange with sparks. All right, next one. Right, next sample is copper. All right, so here is your copper sample. And the copper is burning a very distinctive green color. Right, so the copper is green. All right, so you want to fill in your copper as being whatever version of green that you saw. All right, next up, we've got lithium. going to be our lithium sample. Lithium is burning a very distinctive reddish color, almost um, a pinkish red for the lithium. Let's see your lithium. You've got a pinkish red. All right, working our way down the table. All right, next up, we've got the lead. So this is your lead. And remember, these are all nitrates. These aren't the real ones. Here's the lead. All right, so the lead is sparking a little bit. And the flame is going all right, a really light shade of purple, perhaps a little bit of white even in there, some white light. But I would say light purple to white. Lead, light purple to white. Next up, we've got magnesium. Magnesium in there. Right, put the magnesium in there a couple of times. I am not seeing any color change. And if the color isn't changing, it is because it is showing 
the same as the flame itself. So your magnesium is your pale blue. All right. Next up is your nickel. So the nickel is showing a little bit white with sparks. Let's see your nickel, maybe yellowish white with sparks for the nickel. All right, two to go. Next one's potassium. Your potassium is burning a really pretty shade of uh, purple. So you might say lilac, you might say violet, whatever you see. But that is a purplish, maybe even borderline purplish white. And last but not least, we have strontium. All right, strontium is a reddish orange, a little bit of red, but a hint of orange in there as well. It's not the really dark red that the lithium was. The strontium's got a lot more orange in it than it does the red. All right, so I'm going to turn my water off. And I'm going to turn the lights on, so I'll be right back. All right, so shut my burner down, and you can see that there are a variety of colors all right, that you get. But the thing that's the same for all of them is that electrons hit the burner. They got excited to higher levels, excited states, and as they fell back down to the ground states, they release a package of energy. And certain elements, based on their electronic structure, release different packages of energy. Right? So some of the ones that were the reds, those are low energy packages, right? Red's a low energy color. So those jumps weren't as far, right? Your middle of the roads, if you're working your way through your Roy G. Biv of the rainbow, all right, your greens, things like that, they're kind of middle, maybe a little bit of a bigger jump. And then when you get up to the indigo violets or purples, those are the biggest jumps in the visible light range that we see, right? So the thing we do first is we test each of the samples. Right now, I want to show you guys what the samples themselves look like. Because what you're going to find out is they're not all, all right, the same. We had a couple in there that were orange, all right, various shades of orange. So how do we tell the difference? Well, some of the ways you know is if I show you the copper, the copper's blue. And the cobalt was red, not the color they burned, but the actual physical substance. And the nickel was green. All right, so the next portion of this is that we want to identify some unknowns. So what you would see here in the middle column are 20 different substances, each of them unknown. And what's going to happen? I'll walk you across. Hopefully that's in the picture. There we go. And the idea behind what you're seeing there is that we would then go and test each of those samples to see what color those things were burning. And those are coming from the samples that we tested before. So I made the 20 unknowns as a mixture of those 10. So some of them are absolutely repeat. Now I'm not gonna go and show you all of those. I can simply share uh, what the colors were that they're burnt. So I'm gonna give you guys that table of the unknowns. Right? And one of the first questions in the post lab is to identify them, right? So the first thing I can tell you is that none of those unknowns were green. None of those unknowns were red or none of those unknowns were blue naturally. They were all white solids. So you can right away cross copper, cobalt, 
and nickel off of your list in terms of things that might be your unknowns. That means the other seven that are in there are who made up those 20 samples. All right, so one of the post lab questions asks you to do that. All right, the only other thing you have to know in terms of lab format, all right, this guy here will make this a typed report. This will be a form. All right, and you'll hear me go through this spiel when we have class, but sometimes it's nice to have it at the end when you do your data collection. You'll need a title, you'll need a purpose. If you're curious where that stuff is, look to the back page of the Flame Lab, and it's going to tell you everything that you need. Right? So you're going to see that you need your title, you need a purpose. Right? The procedure is always able to just be copy and pasted from the packet. So you do not, do not, do not need to retype it. I right? need your materials list. Right. And then your data and calculations, I'm going to have two big typed out tables. One, that's the known substances that we were testing. And the second table is the list of 20 unknowns that I give you. Right. Then you're going to answer your post lab questions. On the back, right, there are seven of those. First thing I can tell you is we are omitting question six because we're going to do the line spectra lab second this year instead of first. So you can't answer that question. So you're going to do questions. All right, one through seven, but six is a freebie. All right, answer those questions. And then last but not least is your five-part conclusion. All right, so you guys all right, can get that worked out all right, and send to me. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right, I'd be happy to answer those. And some of that's going to make more and more sense as we push through uh, with class stuff as well. I right, hope everybody's doing good. Hope the video helped out with uh, some gathering some lab information. All right, I'm going to head to the back and uh, clean some things up because it can be a bit messy. Other than that, I will see you guys soon.